The airway epithelium is made up of ciliated cells and goblet cells that form a tight barrier against the outside environment. In healthy individuals, goblet cells secrete mucin proteins that are incorporated into a thick mucus gel that coats the luminal side of the airway. Airway mucus is essential to trap inhaled pathogens and particles acting as a component of epithelial host defense mechanisms. In healthy individuals, airway mucus is easily propelled upward by the beating of cilia to be cleared from the lungs. However, in individuals with asthma, this mucociliary defense mechanism does not function as effectively, and mucus can become trapped, resulting in the formation of mucus plugs. The development of pathologic mucus is an important contributor to the morbidity and mortality associated with asthma. Mucus dysfunction has been studied in other diseases, including cystic fibrosis and COPD, where several mechanisms have been shown to contribute to the formation of mucus plugs. These mechanisms likely also lead to mucus plugs in individuals with asthma and include mucus dehydration, excess mucus production, mucin tethering to goblet cells, and mucin cross-linking. Mucus dehydration leads to the collapse of the periciliary brush mucus layer, so it is no longer able to propel mucus out of the lungs. The goblet cells produce excess mucins, especially MUC5AC, which remains tethered to the goblet cell surface, further inhibiting the ability of the cilia to propel mucus upwards and out of the airways. Finally, Eosinophil proteins, including eosinophil peroxidase, cause mucin crosslinking secondary to oxidation, resulting in a more viscous gel that is difficult to expel. Airway inflammation and asthma is characterized by the infiltration and activation of immune cells that interact with neighboring structural cells, including epithelium and smooth muscle cells. In patients with severe asthma, airway remodeling and increased pathologic mucus production lead to airway hyperresponsiveness and fixed airway obstruction unresponsive to bronchodilators. Since airway resistance is inversely related to airway radius to the fourth power, any structural abnormality that narrows luminal diameter will greatly enhance airway resistance and exaggerate the effects of smooth muscle constriction on flow limitation. To understand why individuals with asthma form mucus plugs, we need to delve deeper into the type 2 inflammatory cascade. Airway epithelial cells are not just a physical barrier between the body and the outside environment. They are also immunologically active and can mediate inflammatory responses to external triggers through receptors that respond to inhaled triggers, such as allergens, pathogens, and air pollution. In response to these triggers, airway epithelial cells produce alarmins, interleukin-33, thymic stromal lymphopoietin, or TSLP, and IL-25. The combination of genetic susceptibility and exposure to triggers cause the airway epithelium to release these alarmins, which then activate eosinophils, T helper 2 cells, mast cells, basophils, dendritic cells, and innate lymphoid cells. Dendritic cells exposed to alarmins migrate from the lung tissue to draining lymph nodes to induce naive T cell maturation to T helper type 2 cell phenotypes. Epithelial alarmins also activate type 2 innate lymphoid cells in the airway, contributing to a positive feedback loop where alarmins cause type 2 cytokine production, which produce more alarmins, and the cycle continues. In addition to the expression of alarmins, Type 2 cytokines have a range of roles in the pathophysiology of inflammatory airways disease and asthma. IL-13 causes goblet cell hyperplasia and mucus production, as well as smooth muscle contractility and hyperplasia. IL-13 also causes airway epithelial barrier dysfunction, which is associated with severe asthma. IL-4 and IL-13 cause B cells to preferentially produce IgE, through a process called class switching. IgE has an important role in the type 2 inflammatory cascade and allergic reactions. The cross-linking of two adjacent IgE molecules activates mast cells and basophils to release biologically active preformed mediators and cytokines. 
These mediators and cytokines reinforce the pro-inflammatory Th2 environment, which results in mucus hyperproduction from goblet cells and subsequently increased airway hyperresponsiveness. IL-5, IL-4, and IL-13 are all involved in the activation and trafficking of eosinophils to lung tissue. Eosinophils are recruited from the bloodstream to the lung, where they get activated by IL-5 released from Th2 cells. IL-5 plays a pivotal role in the differentiation, maturation, and survival of eosinophils. Activated eosinophils exert their effects on the lungs through cytotoxic proteins, cytokines, and lipid mediators. All of these factors contribute to bronchial hyperresponsiveness and goblet cell metaplasia. As our knowledge of mucus plug pathogenesis in asthma improves, we will continue to gain insights regarding potential therapeutic targets. Current monoclonal antibodies that are implemented in the management of severe asthma inhibit many of the components of the type 2 inflammatory cascade. Benralizumab and dupilumab are monoclonal antibodies directed against the alpha chains of the IL-5 receptor and the IL-4 receptor, respectively, and mepolizumab and reslizumab are directed against IL-5. More upstream therapeutic targets include the anti-alarmin monoclonal antibody tezipilumab that binds thymic stromal lymphopoietin, or TSLP, and inhibits its interaction with the TSLP receptor complex. Benralizumab, dupilumab, and tezipilumab in particular have data that supports their efficacy at reducing mucus plugs in patients with asthma, which we will explore in more detail later in this discussion.